We've got a friend who's finally ready to prep his house for the worst. We've got some traps in mind to slow down any intruders. So now we're going to show you guys your smoke screen machine. Oh, wow, look at that. But a safe room is what he really needs to keep his family secure. Why don't we turn this whole bathroom into the safe room? This is bulletproof. We'll prepare this family to make a last stand inside their bulletproof bathroom. This is your shooting port. Oh, my. George is filled with small towns and friendly neighbors. But even here, folks can need protection. That's where we come in. We're a one-stop shop for home security and prepping. I'm Barry. My roots go back to Davy Crockett, and I'm old school. Eric, serving in the military, made him a high-tech expert. And Fred, he's a third-generation hardcore prepper. We set up homes to stop danger in its tracks and leave owners prepared for an apocalypse. From petty crimes to the end of times, we've got you covered. Hey, man. Right. What's going on, Cowboy? How you doing? Just got off work. Thought I'd come by and see if you could help me out with that uh, safe room. Today, an old friend of mine, Mark, came into the shop and we talked a little bit about the safe room that he's been thinking about for years now. I think his wife is finally letting him get around to doing it. What's up, buddy? Hey, man, Long how you doing? OC. Yeah. I kind of overheard what y'all were talking. Uh, Thea finally agreed to get that safe room going, huh? Yeah. Great idea. A safe room is a fortified room in a private residence. It's designed to provide security and protection from a threat. Safe rooms come in all shapes and sizes. You want this plain vanilla, or you want the end of times? Go all the way. Yeah, go big or go home, right? That's right. Or stay home. <laughs> no like guts, no glory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll see you Thursday bright and early, Mark. All right, man. We're headed to McDonough, Georgia. Few people know this, but it's the home of the self-propelled rotary lawnmower. You take a big glass of iced tea, combine it with a self-propelled lawnmower, sounds like a Georgia summer to me. Thanks for having us, Mark. Sure. Hey, Thea. Want to come in and meet the guys? Hey. Hey. Hey, here. What's going on? Long time no see? Yeah, long time. All right. Has uh, Mark kind of filled you in on the idea for the safe room? A little, yeah. I hear it's going to be in my master closet. Well, I, I promise <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Theo, so, Mark, I don't remember. Do y'all have any kids living here still? Two teenagers. Two teenagers. OK, there's yeah. four of y'all together. Mm -hmm. There are. Got it. And Got two it. dogs. <laughs> and two dogs. Safety's good for the whole family. We can incorporate that. Not a big deal. So we want to go up there and have a look around? Sure. All right. Come Lead on. the way. All right. All right. Mark's initial idea to put the safe room inside of his walk-in closet is actually a brilliant idea. It's on the top level of the house, and it's easily accessible to everyone. But you do have to go through the master bedroom, then the master bathroom, to get to the walk-in closet. It's not a real big space, but literally, I mean, two adults and two teenagers could lay on the floor in here. And two dogs. So it's not real. Oh, <laughs> when we finally saw the master closet, it looked a little cramped. You're thinking a prep scenario for a day or for three to seven days? Well, I, I'd like it longer term, um, but with the given space, I, I think that we would end up killing each other. Oh. <laughs> All right, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a better idea. You know what, why don't we turn this whole bathroom into the safe room? What we're really gonna need to be concerned with is making sure we got all your preps um, in the closet itself. So that's pretty much easy. I think that this bathroom actually has a lot going for it in terms of being a safe room for you. Having the bathroom as part of the safe room is gonna work great because there's more storage space, there's area for them to breathe a little bit and get out of the actual closet. First step's gonna be fortifying this door because that's gonna be the choke point. This door can be upgraded, made a little sturdier. The hinges are on the inside. This is actually something they're gonna have to go out of their way to try to kick in or get in or anything like that. We can barricade that, that's no big deal. Exactly. I already see how we can make that door impenetrable. We're gonna add two layers to this door to make it bulletproof. This fortified door is gonna keep anybody from harming this family. And then you got the water, the sinks, you got more space, you have a toilet. Definitely love that idea. We can put a bladder in this thing to, you know, hold about 50 yeah. gallons of water. Turning a bathroom into a safe room has its advantages. Can you imagine being stuck in a room without a toilet for several days at a time? I mean, you might have food to eat and all that kind of stuff, but what are you gonna do with it after that? We'll put a stabilizer bar behind the door that comes down. We wanna work on probably some security cameras. That way you can see, you know, right, you know, who's outside of the door immediately. 
We'll have a monitor in here that you can see what's going on. Might want to put a gun port in the door. Mm, that that's way, gonna... when you're, if you're in here and they're out there, you can put the gun through the door. Mark and I are gun experts, and I know he can shoot, and as long as he can see on that camera, he can blast anybody in that bedroom. You know, I think it's quite clear what we need to do. I think we need to look around the rest of the house and do a little bit more assessing. One thing I always tell people when they're trying to prep, they need multiple layers of defense. Well, Mark, Thea, I think we just really need to kick this up one more notch. Like what? Well, we've dealt with smoke screens before. A smoke screen fogs up your house and makes it difficult for intruders to even find your safe room. What do you think? I'm a little skeptical about that one. It's going to be completely safe. It's not going to leave a residue. Once it's cleared out, you'll never know it was here. We've done this before. They're going to be extremely disoriented. They're not going to have a single clue about what's going on. They're going to turn around and leave. Well, that's the whole goal, right? Exactly. Exactly. As long as it's, uh, it fits into the decor, I guess. Oh, well, let's uh, put our heads together. We'll figure out a good place to uh, deploy it. Well, I think what we need to do now is go out back and check out the uh, backyard. They got woods back here where they can hunt and gather food if they need to. Fenced in backyard. Dogs are out here. I don't think they have anything to worry about in terms of security back here. What you got under here, Mark, is it, why is this elevated like this? There's a jacuzzi underneath there. We got water in it now? I don't think so. Well, that would be a good emergency water supply. You've got a lot of garden space over here. I mean, if you wanted to, you could really fill this garden out to full capacity and have plenty of food. Well, Mark, Theo, how much uh, food do you actually get out of this little garden? I just started it this year, and out of each one of those um, squares, I get 16 different crops at any one time. What do time. you normally grow? This year I grew tomatoes, a lot of squash, uh, mm -hmm. beans, peas, mm -hmm. lettuce. Uh, radishes. This right here is the leftover of my strawberries. They kind of are still trying to hang on. And, and the leftover of my peppers, I got tons of peppers this year. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? So um, mm -hmm. I picked the last crop just about a week ago. Well, peppers are great for you. You know, they have a lot of antioxidants and, you know, really you know, hot, hot foods in general are very good for you. So that's good to have lots of peppers around. You know, you add that, perhaps you've already got, and then all the area you have out here in the woods to be able to hunt food or you know, even plant more plots out there, you have plenty of potential there for food. That's not a problem. It's a good idea. Absolutely. And as far as secure, I mean, you got the dogs. They bark when people come up. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got an alarm system in the back. Well, Mark and Thea's backyard is fantastic. It's fenced in already. There's two big dogs that bark nice and deep. They've got a garden. They have an old abandoned hot tub on the deck that they can use to store water in. The back of the house is secure. Well, Mark and Thea, I think the backyard is pretty well covered. Let's go around to the front of the house because that's going to be where they're coming in. That's going to be the softest entrance for them is right out here. Right. This is hard entrance here. OK. okay. Good. Let's do that. All right. All right. Now, let's check out the front of the place. What I'm seeing right here is you've kind of got this just wide open area just inviting them to try to kick in the door or break in. So I think that what we're going to want to do is get kind of an eye in the sky, get a camera up there. It'll be on constant feed upstairs. Put a monitor up there. That way, you know, it never has to turn on. It's always there. We'll probably end up putting a camera inside the house, too, yeah. just for extra coverage. That way, you know, just in case somebody doesn't come through this area and they do make it into yeah. the house, maybe the other camera will catch them. Well, you're right. If they come in, they got to come through that door. Criminals and marauders are like water. They go to the least resistance. So we had to find the weakest point on Mark's house. The weakest part of Mark's house was the very front door. They have a hardwood floor in the foyer here. And what we're going to do, we're going to slow them down so Thea and Mark and the kids can make it to the safe room. We may even stop them right here, but we got to slow them down. I call it the slip and fall. When an intruder enters the home, 20,000 airsoft pellets will be unleashed. This will delay the intruder long enough for the family to make it to the safe room. Well, that sounds like a plan, kind of like layers of security. Layers. That's it. OK. That makes sense. Here's what we're going to do. We're turning a bathroom and master closet into a safe room with a bulletproof door. Eric's installing cameras so the family can monitor activity on their property from the safe room. To keep intruders from getting to the safe room, we're rigging up a slip and fall at the front door and installing a smoke screen device to fog up the house and scare off any home invaders. Mission accomplished. Our clients are letting us use their workroom right on the premises. Hey, Barry, set that on um, piece of plywood up here on this. We're going to use this as a table. We're going to add two layers to this door to make it bulletproof. Barry, first thing we'll have to do is um, liquid nail the composite on there. I've already got that sheet cut. 
The first layer we're adding to this door is a composite made of fiberboard. Fiberboard's kinda like the same principle as Kevlar. It's woven fibers together, so it's gonna be extremely dense and hard to penetrate. So set it down at this edge, and I'm gonna slide it to you. The next layer is a steel panel that's gonna make this door bulletproof. Even if it's not the end of the world scenario, mm -hmm. this works for a great safe. I mean, if they're not home or they go on vacation, they just lock the door. Right there, right? Got it? I'm drilling the hole for the doorknob. Good to go. Here we go. Fred, this is looking great, dude. Heavy duty, heavy duty. Next, guys, we gotta make a portal for the gun hole. It's a pretty skinny hallway there, so we're just gonna go dead center. All we gotta do is drill a hole in the door, and then all they have to do is look at the camera monitor to see where the criminals are. We'll have it set in here, so you push it out of the way, let go at gravity shuts. Yeah. Now that the gun hole is drilled, we're just gonna install this latch that swings open and closed. Shoot, and then move it, and it just falls back. Got it. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Yep, that's it. Hey, guys, I got kind of a crazy idea. Hear me out. I noticed while we were uh, working on the door in the shop, there was a CO2 cylinder started to get an idea. We can fill this with pepper spray or maybe even something even more caustic than that. I don't that. see why not. You have it pressurized. The family's in the safe room. They're going to be able to see outside with, with your camera, right? Yeah. So they'll know if there's anybody out there that really needs taken care of. They've got gas masks in the room. Like purging a house of cockroaches. You're darn right. Except this time, it'll be intruders and marauders. You know, I must have some kind of dark angel somewhere floating around, because these ideas just, they just float down. Pretty heavy. Yeah, it is. Now we're heading upstairs to install the door in the bathroom that we're turning into a safe room. All right, guys, let's get this thing in here. Oh, hold on, I got one pin started. Fred, why is it with you that you always have to kick or hit things? That fixes most things. When in doubt, hit it. See, I just hit it, and what? It fell right in place, what? <clears throat> here it goes. That's it. Before moving on, we want to make sure the gun porthole is sized right. How's that shoot hole look? It looks pretty good. Right to the groin. Why don't you move your ass out of the way and I'll look. See if this shotgun works well here. Yes, perfect fit, nailed it. For the family to monitor activity on their property, we've got to install cameras in strategic areas. Barry, I think I got a perfect place for this camera up here in the corner. All right, I think this location right here is gonna be about right. That gives us about the angle we want where we can see the approach here, and we're probably be, gonna be able to see the driveway pretty well. All the cameras are wireless, infrared. While this camera is designed to be viewed from the safe room, it's also gonna give Mark a little added bonus. This camera is gonna be awesome for Mark, cause you know, he's got a 15 year old daughter. She'll have a lot of boys chasing her around, and Mark can protect her if a guy tries anything silly. Yeah, this is a, a camera that every dad with a 15 year old daughter needs. <laughs> The second camera is going to be hidden in a smoke detector to see if anybody makes it through that front door. Good to go. The third camera is probably the most important. I'm putting a camera up in the corner of their master bedroom, directly across from the safe room door so they can see who's approaching. You done yet? You got it? Yeah, man. Good to go. You ready? Yeah, I got to go check on Barry. Yeah, let's do that. This is one of the most basic of booby traps. OK. Well, I call it the slip and fall. And what it is on the inside of Mark and Thea's front door, we're gonna have a big piece of PVC pipe attached to the inside of the door. We're gonna have a lid on the bottom held on with magnets. In that tube, we're gonna put 20,000 airsoft pellets. Well, we've got an eye hook here to hold the wire attached to the base plate. And of course, we've got our magnets on here. When the door opens, this will slide off and all the pellets will come crashing out. Now, when somebody crashes that door, blam. <laughs> And they Everybody. fall all over the floor and they bust their ass. Bam, boom, bam. Is this thing gonna stay put all the time? No, they, they'll put it on every night, take it off every morning, unhook it, store it over here. What makes this device practical is it doesn't depend upon electricity. So in the event of a power outage, it still works. When they come through here, they're gonna bust their ass. And if they try to get out, they're gonna bust their ass three or four more times trying to get to the door. You know, I'm just not so sure, Barry. You know, the idea of it, I guess I can understand but I'm gonna have to see it work to believe it. You sprung some of my traps in the past, so you can test this one out. Eric doesn't think this is gonna work, but I'm all about effect here, and I guarantee you it's gonna be effective. What we need to do now is fill that thing with these pellets, and let's see how she works. How's it going, guys? 
Going good, man. We're about to test the trout. So we've got this thing all rigged up, and Eric's gonna be the guinea pig. Come on in, test it out. All right, anytime you're ready. Whoa! <laughs> his feet flew out from under him, he busted his butt. <laughs> <laughs> when my right foot hit, it was it. It was like slipping on a banana peel. I'm going to have a bruise on my ass later. Eric thinks he's the only one with bright ideas. I guess he learned his lesson. Look at that. Pretty slippery, huh? Yes, it is. Yep. It is. Sorry I doubted you, Barry. It's a pretty good idea. That's awesome, dude. Never saw that before, did you? No. You give Barry 20,000 airsoft balls, he'll find a way to overthrow Cuba. Where does he come up with this shit? See, now that's slippery yeah. as hell right there. Like, the slip and fall ploy will definitely delay intruders to give the family time to get into the safe room. But the smoke screen device can stop them from getting upstairs. Well, Barry, what's the plan up here? There's a vent right there. Maybe we can put the smoke, make it come out that vent right there. That sounds like a plan. Doesn't look like anything is even going to that vent, Barry, is it? No, there's not. It's an open vent top up here, and it's a, there's a nice floorboard up here. Why don't I get the unit up there? OK. And I'll, I'll find a way to wire it in. Sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah, let's knock it out. Come on down, and I'll, I'll get All this right. up there. We have to line up the nozzles with the smoke tree machine with the vents in the ceiling. That way, the smoke can blast down into the house and not fog up the attic. Well, Barry, this here is smoke machine puts out 30,000 cubic feet of smoke per minute. I just need you to help me get it lined up here. Move it about an inch back towards the... OK. Move it a little bit to your right. Now, perfect. How long will it take that little jewel to warm up? Maybe 10 minutes, and we'll be good. All right. Hey, man, what's going on? You got this done or what? Yes, we do. It's already installed, and we're going to run the unit through that vent right there. Best of all, we actually have these remotes that Thea and Mark are gonna be able to use from inside the safe room to set it off. I'm liking that, I'm feeling it. All right, let's wrap it up and finish the rest of the stuff. Stock up the closet, finish the safe room. We've got the safe room set up with the sleeping bags, camping gear, medical supplies, got gas masks for each of the family. You name it, it's in there. Last, we're going to install a water bladder in the tub so the family will have plenty of drinking water in a crisis. You can get these in emergency supply shops for around 40 bucks. I'll just fill up this giant water balloon. How about that? That sounds like a good idea. This water bladder has several functions. That's something a lot of people don't think about in a time of crisis. You may not be able to flush your toilets. If the city water's cut off, they can flush the commode by just filling the tank with the, with the water out of the bladder. Even at two gallons of flush, that's 50 times. Yeah, right. Well, you do it once a day. Once a day, one that's yellow, let it mellow. One that's brown, flush it down. Do what now? We'll just empty it before we go so the family can use their tub. It only takes about 10 minutes to refill if a disaster strikes. We're all ready to show Mark and Thea the safe room. We've got the uh, water bladder in the tub with 100 gallons of uh, water. We prep the master closet to the max with survival supplies. But what makes this safe room super safe is the door. This is a reinforced door, two dead bolts, and uh, entry door with key. Oh my. So this is bulletproof. And you have. Oh, wow. Right? Okay. Nobody's coming this, in there. This is your magnet attached shotgun. That's good. I like right? It. Okay. This is your shooting port, which you push this out of the way with the barrel. And then you have a shooting port that shoots about waist high. Well, Mark, Thea, we're not going to deploy it right now, but what we're going to do is go through the motions of y'all getting into your masks, and then we're going to show you how this works. Put it into your face, and as you breathe in, it seals. Then pull this over the back, just like that. Pop your straps. That's pretty much it. They're very easy to, to put on and off. Now, once you've got your masks on, and this is the last resort, you take your canister of pepper gas, you open up your gun port, you stick it out the hole, you crack it wide open. They don't have a gas mask. They got to go. And they're going to run. You've saved your family. What we call this is a marauder fogger. Hopefully, we will never have to use them. Right. And yeah, and the nice thing about this also is that you're going to be able to see 
If the cameras we've installed outside, what's going on? So you know who to shoot or if they're there or not. Well, guys, what you see on the counter here is your monitoring system for your security cameras. When you're locked up in here, you don't see anything that's going on in your house. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be able to get eyes in the sky and know how to react. You need to know if they're friend or foe. Now we're gonna show you guys the uh, last thing you're getting is your smoke screen machine. All right, this is your remote. Since you were so skeptical, Theo, I'm gonna let you have it. Uh, you're actually gonna get to see all the action from the screen here. When you see an intruder entering your home, you press the remote, which sets off the smoke screen. Fred's gonna be our guinea pig. How's it my turn again? <laughs> He's gonna try to come up the stairs through the billowing smoke. Ready to try it out? I'm ready. Absolutely. The first thing I gotta do is go out on the porch, be a robber, and break in the house. This is gonna be fun. Whoa! He went down, didn't he? He sure did. Oh, yeah. But if he breaks it, he buys it. <laughs> well, yeah, he might break himself. <laughs> if I was really trying to attack this family, I'd know from the door trap these aren't the folks I'd want to mess with. But I got a job to do, so I got to keep moving. So what say we uh, test this thing out? To keep Fred from getting up the stairs, Thea's going to click her remote, and it's going to set off the smoke screen. Smoke's coming down. Yeah, it is. Smoke's Look at coming it. down. Definitely can't find the door. In under a minute, the whole house was full of smoke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't see Fred anymore. I'm not going to make it in there. I can't see nothing. This is great. Wow, I can't believe that that one little tap of that remote caused so much smoke so quickly. See you downstairs, guys. I knew where the safe room was, and I couldn't see through the smoke. I'm sure any criminal here is going to turn around and go rob somebody else. Hey, guys, if you want to get rid of me, <coughs> you could have just told me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might be stuck in here for a minute, but uh, I think the smoke will clear out soon. We'll get some windows open. Got some MREs in here in case. It's really nice to see that Mark and Thea are happy with this build, because I put a lot on the line personally with it as well, because it's also an issue of friendship. We were able to bulletproof their bathroom. There it goes. That's it. And prep their closet with emergency supplies for around 1,200 bucks. The smoke screen defense was an additional 2,500 bucks. The whole family is pleased with this setup that we did for them. <laughs> and uh, you know, I feel like Dr. Prepper. <laughs> <laughs>